will dance. I will not struggle at home. I will not struggle at work. I will not struggle over the business. I will not struggle over ministry. I will not struggle over my children. I will not struggle over my children. I will not struggle over my children. I will not struggle in my marriage. I will not struggle in life. I will not struggle in this journey of life. I will not struggle. I will not struggle. I declare that I'm thriving. I declare that I'm thriving. You're releasing frequencies. You're releasing sounds that must respond to what you're saying. In the name of Jesus. And so we release sounds over every hour, over every minute, over every second, over every moment of the day. In the name of Jesus, we are coming with power. We are coming with power. We are coming with might in the name of Jesus. The might of the Lord, the strength of the Lord. For Jesus was anointed with the Holy Ghost and power. We have been anointed with the Holy Ghost and power. Anointed with the Holy Ghost and power. Therefore, we'll go about doing good. Doors will open on their own accord in the name of Jesus. There will be divine connections in the day. Release sounds, release sounds, frequencies. You release it. They will respond in the spirit to what you are saying in the name of Jesus. Spirit and life, spirit and life, spirit and life. Declare over the day. That this is a productive day. This is a productive day in the name of Jesus. A day of abundance, a day of peace, a day of joy. This is yes, in the Yes, a supernatural day in the name of Jesus. And it's your ordinary day. Our children will thrive, our spouses will thrive, every one of us will thrive, our siblings will thrive, our parents will thrive in the name of Jesus. Yes, the Lord will bless and establish the works of our hands. We have some mind in our Yes, declare that I'm not unstable, I am stable in the name of Jesus. I have faith. I have the God kind of faith. I have the God kind of faith. I have the mind of the Spirit. Come and declare it, declare it, declare it. I do the word of the Lord naturally. I am born of God. Therefore, I overcome the world. I am born of God. Therefore, I overcome the world. I am born of God. Therefore, I overcome the world. Release a sound this morning. That says, is he who is in me than he who is in the world. In the name of Jesus. I do not struggle with the word of God. I do not struggle with the word of the Lord. For the word of the Lord is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. 
I do the word of God naturally because I'm walking in my new identity. In the name of Jesus, I understand the word of the Lord because I have the spirit of understanding, the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of counsel, the spirit of might, the spirit of knowledge. I have him dwelling on the inside of me. I am maximizing my relationship with the Holy Ghost. I am maximizing my relationship with the Holy Ghost. He leaves me, I follow him. He speaks, I listen. He gives instructions, I obey. I'm built up by his word. I'm guarded by his word. I'm protected by his word. I thrive in his word. I thrive in my relationship with the Holy Ghost. I thrive in my relationship with the Holy Spirit. Oh, come and declare that this morning. There is no struggle. I work in harmony with the Holy Ghost. I thrive in my relationship with the Holy Spirit. Come and say that again. He leads me, I follow him. He speaks, I listen. He instructs me, I obey. Yes, I thrive in my relationship with the Holy Ghost. I thrive in my relationship with the Holy Ghost. I enjoy my relationship with the Holy Ghost. I enjoy my relationship with the Holy Ghost. I celebrate my relationship with the Holy Ghost. Yes, I celebrate my relationship with the Holy Ghost. He's my strength. He's my comforter. He teaches me, and I yes, I'm learning. I'm learning. I'm learning from him. He opens my eyes and I see. He opens my ears and I hear. He puts a word in season in my mouth and I speak. Oh yes, I thrive in my relationship with the Holy Ghost. I have his mind because I have the mind of the Spirit of God. I allow his word to renew my mind daily. I allow his word to renew my mind daily. I allow the Holy Ghost, the word of the Lord to renew my mind daily. The grace of God is multiplied upon me. The peace of God is multiplied upon me. Yes, because of the Holy Spirit that is on the inside of me. Oh yes, and I'm working with it. Oh yes, Madam Shell that I'm submitted to her. I am submitted to the Holy Ghost. I am submitted to his leading. I am submitted to his direction. I am submitted to his instruction. He takes over. 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 He takes over.
ones that are, you no longer have a place in our bodies. In the name of Jesus, we release the sounds of healing. We release sounds of healing, sounds of good health. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, our water, I am a shadow of blood, sugar, is all balanced. In the name of Jesus, our blood pressure is balanced. In the name of Jesus, we're walking in healing. We're walking in healing. We're walking in healing. In the name of Jesus, my hormones, yes, they are balanced. In the name of Jesus, everything that concerns my body, yes, is balanced. In the name of Jesus, anything that concerns my mind is sound. I have sound mind. I think correctly. In the name of Jesus, by the help of the Holy Ghost, in the name of Jesus, I make sound judgment. In the name of Jesus, sound decisions. In the name of Jesus, to glorify the name of the Lord. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Thank <laughs> Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Bob. Paul says every sound is determined. Every sound is defined. And what we're doing this morning was releasing defined sounds in the spirit in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Sounds of what will determine, hallelujah, or confirm the mind of God concerning today, the will of God concerning the day, in the name of Jesus. When you speak, we hear. So when we speak, hallelujah, things are done even in the spirit. What the Lord did was to speak and it was done, in the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Pray that we would hear this again in Jesus' name and walk in this truth. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Father, we thank you. Because we're here this morning, Lord. You are with us in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, 
Moses was coming down from the mountain. Hallelujah. The Bible tells us that he heard sounds and he was speaking to Joshua. He said, I hear a sound. Is it the sound of war? No, it's not the sound of war. Hallelujah. What sound is that? Is it a sound of, uh, I think there was another sound and then that he, that he, that he described in the snow. He says, I hear a sound of wild praise. Sounds, hallelujah, sent communication. Sounds, sends communication. And when Jesus, hallelujah, when the Holy Ghost came, he came with the sound of a mighty rushing wind. I don't know what the Holy Ghost is saying to us this morning in the name of you. When you come into a place of prayer, and you know by now I'm not just talking about here. Open up your mouth and release a sound. Hallelujah. Release a sound that determines, hallelujah, what either you want or the mind of God in the realm of the spirit. Because sounds release communication. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When you listen, what's that sound? What's that sound? When you listen to people's voices, it sounds that you hear. It sounds that you hear. It says, my 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 sheep knows my voice. It knows yeah. sound. The voice of a stranger they will not follow. And that's a sound like this. Oh, that's, that sounds like my son. Oh, that sounds like my daughter. Oh, that sounds like my father. Oh, that sounds. Hallelujah. I pray for us this morning that as we have opened up our mouths to speak, we will see results in the name of Jesus. We will see testimonies in the name of Jesus. And the Lord will be glorified. He will continue to be glorified in our lives in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now shout a shout of victory. Hallelujah. Shout a hallelujah sound. Hallelujah. If you can shout for somebody that is not shouting. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now shout, 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 shout. Make that joy. Welcome everyone here on this beautiful day in Jesus name morning evening time hallelujah night time I celebrate every one of you in the name of Jesus I celebrate the ministers of God in the room in the name of Jesus we just thank him for what he's doing I celebrate every home every family that is represented here every nation that is represented here we you are all celebrated hallelujah we thank God for your consistency your determination your commitment your commitment hallelujah the lord honor you all in jesus name he honors you he will honor you hallelujah you will see evidential honor upon your life in the name of jesus i decree and declare that he will crown every day not just the year but every day hallelujah with his goodness for us in the name of jesus david thought about the year but i'm thinking about the days amen hallelujah may he crown may the lord crown our days with his goodness in the name of jesus may he crown our weeks with his goodness may he crown our months with his goodness and may he also crown the year with his goodness in the name of jesus amen Amen. Your amen is important. Amen. amen. Your amen means you are in a dream. Amen. 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 Praise amen. the Lord. Praise amen. the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. So we we are joyfully going into the word of the Lord in the name of Jesus. Amen. We're moving swiftly um, to Romans chapter 8. And um, as I was reflecting on it, hallelujah, I got a message from the man of God which was confirming what I was thinking about, that we would not be able to come. 
complete that chapter today um, but we will do the first half today and do the second half tomorrow because if you've read it and you are or maybe you're familiar with it you know that it's a long chapter and we want to make sure that we are not just you know um, going through the motions not just the motions uh, you know people are binging they binge just eat, 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 eat. We, want, we want we want to take our time to eat and enjoy and let the food digest in the name of Jesus, that we will become what we eat. And we will say, you are what you eat. Hallelujah. So we are eating spirit until we release spirit. Amen. Over to you, Mr. Chris. God bless you, sir. God bless you, woman of God. Thank you for the privilege. I count it a privilege of my right. Amen. It's a privilege to be able to summarize this book as we go on. So I want to say good morning again. And I just love that scripture you started with this morning. That says, now when Joshua heard the noise of the people as they shouted, remember it is Joshua that heard the noise. At times some of these scriptures, when we read them, we just need to pause. The Joshua heard the noise of the people as they shout. He said to Moses, there is a sound of battle in the camp. But the experienced man that has stayed with the Lord, that has feasted with the Lord, that understands the voice of God, that understands that sounds are not just sound, that the enemy can also pretend to be around. The man of God that really understands, he says, he shows his act to the people for his ways to Moses. But Moses said, it is not the cry of victory, nor the cry of defeat. So there are different cries. But I hear the sound of singing. Another version says, wild praise. So being able to recognize what sound you are bringing out as you come before God, it's important. We know the rest of that story. Mm. It wasn't a, a good a, uh, experience for the children of Israel. Mm. Our prayer this morning is, God, let the sound we make this morning be a good experience before yes. you. Yes. Even as we come before you, O oh Lord, we ask that let our prayer rise up to you as a sweet smelling savour. Every time I listen to that, I read that scripture, I just go, hmm, what is a sweet smelling savour? Yes. So it's carried up as an incense. So Lord, we appear before you this morning, Holy Spirit, we submit our spirit before you, that Lord, our voice, our sound will not just be a wasted sound and I hear it will not be the sound the symbol just like going through the motion our father whatever comes through us will be what your word is telling us in the book of Romans chapter 8 even as we study that Jesus now lives in us so that victory we have in Christ Lord let it show this morning Lord we worship you thank you for the privilege of reading your word it's a privilege that we must not be taken for granted. Lord, you give us this word. There are believers that walk this earth that never had the word. All they have is the Holy Spirit to commune with. We have the logos, we have the rema, we have the Holy Spirit to help us interpret it. For this, we are grateful. We are grateful, we are grateful, we are grateful, we are grateful. We are grateful. Let your spirit dwell in us, O oh Lord. The spirit inside us, your spirit inside us, let it interpret this word, O oh Lord. We tie our spirit to your spirit. Open our eyes, open our eyes, open our eyes. Open our eyes, O oh Lord, open our eyes. We just don't want to come to this world instead and just sit down there and watch. Open our eyes to the power That maidservant told 
that general that came before Allah. He said, if he has told you to go and do this, do that, won't you do it? He said to you to go and dip in the water seven times. Oh, my master, you are the one that carries the leprosy. This man doesn't carry the leprosy. You are the one that carries the leprosy. So go and do what he has told you to do. The Bible says, as he did it, his skin becomes clean. Lord Jesus, even as we do this this morning, oh Lord, let our skin become clean like the skin of a baby. Let the washing of the water, let it reveal your identity in us. That's our desire this morning, oh Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. So this morning, as a woman, of course, I said, we're going to go into Romans chapter 8. I've craved that indulgence that we're just going to do 17 verses. Um, this is what the whole book from chapter 1 to 7 is building up to. You know, when you are reading something and you go, what's it going on about? This is where it's building to. For people that watch football, and if you have privilege to support a great team like Arsenal, like me. When we start playing, you say, oh, put the ball in the net for God's sake. This tippy-tappy, tippy-tappy. This is when the ball goes into the net and you score the first goal. So get your spirit ready. Get your spirit ready. This is the first goal. We're going to start from 1 to um, 8 and another person is going to do 9 to 17 and we'll pause. So two readers this morning, what has been said? First reader, verse 1 to 8. Let's go, please. Romans. The first, so the first verse I heard no was... Hold on, Sister Francesca. Yeah. Hallelujah. We heard a voice first. <laughs> it's good. Sister Francesca? Yes. You're going to come back? Yes. Later? Amen. When you're sharing, we heard a voice before you. What's yeah. that sister's voice, please? Blessings. Just a message, let's go, please. Thank Listen. you. Romans 8 1. Life in the Spirit. So now there is no condemnation for those who belong to Jesus, to Christ Jesus. Mm. And because you belong to Him, the power of life giving Spirit has freed you from the power of sin that leads to death. The law of Moses was unable to save us because of the weakness of our sinful nature. So God did what the law could not do. He sent his own son in a body like the bodies we sinners have. And in that body, God declared an end to sin's control over us by giving his son as a sacrifice for our sins. He did this so that the just requirement of the law would be fully satisfied for us who no longer follow our sinful nature, but instead follow the Spirit. Okay, sis, so hold on there, just wait. Can you do me a big favor and I'm pleading, please? Not taking me for granted, please. If you want to go to chapter 7 and you will start reading from verse 24, because when the scriptures start with therefore or so, it doesn't give you the full picture. I know chapter 8, verse 1 is something every Christian knows like a song. And I want that verse 1 to really sink in. So if we go to chapter 7, and read from verse 24, and you will read up to verse 8. Yes. Reading sir. the word of God must be done in context, and people should, we as Christians, should be able to see what the Holy Spirit's mind is pouring out onto us. So please, if you start from verse 24 of chapter 7. Romans seven twenty-four says, mm. Oh, what a miserable person I am who will free me from this life that is damnated by sin and death. Thank God, the answer is in Jesus Christ our Lord. So you see how it is. In my mind, I really want to obey God's law, but 
Because of my sinful nature, I am a slave to sin. Continue. The one? Yes, please. So now there is no condemnation for those who belong to Christ Jesus. And because we belong to him, the power of the life-giving spirit has freed you from the power of sin that leads to death. The law of Moses, Moses was unable to save us because of the weakness of our sinful nature. So God did what the law could not do. He sent his own son in a body that in a body like the bodies we sinners have. And in that body, God declared an end to sin's control over us by giving his son as a sacrifice for our sins. He did this so that the just requirement of the law would be fully satisfied for us. Who no longer follow our sinful nature, but instead follow the spirit. So those who are dominated by the sinful nature think about simple things but those who are controlled by the holy spirit think about things that please the spirit i want everybody if you've got a pen please underline that scripture verse five please underline it go on sis so letting your sinful nature control your mind leads to death But letting the Spirit control your mind leads to life and peace. For the sinful nature is always hostile to God. It never did obey God's law. And it never will. That's why those who are still under the control of their sinful nature can never, never please God. Wow, thank you for emphasizing it. Can never, never please God can never never please God but the sinful nature is always hostile to God it never did obey God's law it never will it never never did obey God and it never will. Okay, let's do 9 to 17. 9 to 17. Who is taking that? Sir Francesca, I thought you were queued up. Yes, uh, but you're not controlled by your sinful nature. You are controlled by the Spirit if you have the Spirit of God living in you. And remember that those who do not have the spirit of Christ living in them do not belong to him at all. And Christ lives within you. So even though your body will die because of sin, the spirit gives you life because you have been made right with God. The spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. And just as God raised Christ Jesus from the dead, he will give you life to your mortal bodies by the same spirit living within you. Therefore, dear brothers and sisters, you have no obligation to, you have no obligation to do what your sinful nature urges you to do. For if you live by it, for if you live by it dictates, you will die. But if through the power of the spirit, you put to death the deeds of your sinful nature, you will live. For all who are led by the spirit of God, are children of God. So if you have not received a spirit that makes you fearful slaves, instead you receive God's spirit when he adopted you as his own children. Now we call him Abba Father, for his spirit joins with our spirit to affirm that we are God's children. And since we are his children, we are his heirs. In fact, together with Christ, we are heirs of God's glory. But if we are to share his glory, 
we must also share his suffering. Amen. 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 Do you know there's some scriptures you can just read and read and read and read? And you just stay in that scripture and never, never stop. And you just enjoy that scripture even without nobody interpreting it. You don't even need an interpreter. You just want the Holy Spirit to open the power of that scripture to you. And for me, chapter 8 of Romans is that book. I'm going to read the um, King James Version, the New King James Version, on to verse 1 and 2, because I'm sure that is one that almost every Christian in this room has heard. Actually, I'm going to start from verse 22 of chapter 7. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man, but I see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind, and bringing into captivity to the law of sin which is in my members. O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from this body of death? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then, with the mind I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh the law of sin. Therefore, there is therefore, there is therefore, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not according to the flesh, but after the Spirit. Holy Spirit, help us, because we just want to walk according to your word. You might wonder, why is Brother Chris so insistent on this verse 1 this morning? Like I said, it's like when you score a goal, when you've been playing a match. We've done 1 to 7, and Paul has just been exposing to us how miserable human beings are. When we walk by our flesh, when we walk according to the law, it's done all the comparative way. In fact, it ended chapter 7 screaming about himself. That's why I went back to it again. That's oh, what a wretched man I am. Even me, Paul. I mean, a man that wrote growth to third of the New Testament, got to the point in his walk. Because he still lives in this body, the spirit lives in this body at the time. He spoke about his wretchedness, of his members, of his flesh, of his body, subjecting itself to sin. Even though everything, the spirit, everything packaged in him wants to serve God. He says, so then, with the mind I serve the law of God, but with the flesh the law of sin. So, it sounds as if there's no hope for man. But suddenly, Paul just burst into verse 1 and said, well, now there is no condemnation. Because Satan would have been clapping and rubbing his hands, listening to some of those teachings. But there is no condemnation for who? For who? For those who belong to Christ Jesus. So forget the law of sin. Forget the flesh. Forget everything. Because you belong to him, the power of the life-giving spirit has freed you and it has freed me. Remember Paul was still talking to himself. In fact, if you look at the analysis, he says some manuscript read, reads me. And it's important for us to actually rest in that word because except you understand what the freedom that we have is, we will still have the struggle with our Christian walk. 
The law of Moses was unable to save us because of the weakness of our sinful nature. We've dealt with the issue of the law. We've spoken about it. So God did what the law could not do. He sent his own son in a body like the bodies we sinners have. God's son did not sin. He just came in the package of this body. Like the body we sinners we, we sinners have. So God entered inside our body to kill the body. He never sinned. He who knew no sin became sin for us. Entered into the body, this flesh, the same flesh that Paul was wrestling with. Jesus Christ was the only one that lived in this body and never sinned. Remember what Paul was saying in verse in the verse in, in the chapter before? That his body, his body. And if you need to remember what John said, say if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. But Jesus Christ is the only one that lived in that inside his body and never sinned. And in that body, God declared an end to the sin control over us by giving his son as a sacrifice for our sin. So what did God then do? God put him inside his body and because he never sinned and he needed to carry the entire sin of the world, he now heaped our whole sin upon him. He did this so that the just requirement of the Lord will be fully satisfied for us. What kind of love is this? That a man will sacrifice his only begotten son for us to be reconciled to him. To satisfy, to satisfy the just requirement of the law. So you can see what the law does. It needs satisfaction. It needs pleasing. We cannot break away from our sinful nature without ending that hold of sin. I think it's the word uh, most Bible scholars use is repatriation or something like that. I'll return, but I would. Pastor Chris, if you please remember, you can type up or just mention the repo, repo whatever way what it's called. It's a big, big word. It is this so that the just requirement of the law would be fully satisfied for us. We we'll no longer follow after our sinful nature, but instead follow the Spirit. But the question I want us to ask. This one is, what does it mean to follow the Spirit? Because some of these words might just sound like, hmm, sin we know. What? Sin we don't even have to learn. It's part of the human nature. Thank God for the law. The law has confirmed to us what sin is. You know, 600 and something laws that were given to Moses tells us straight on what sin looks like when man felt man became a liar. But what does it mean to follow the Spirit? Five, verse 5 says, Those who are dominated by the sinful nature think about sinful things, but those who are controlled by the Holy Spirit think about things that please the Spirit. So, what are the things that please the Spirit? The Spirit itself is the Word of God. Don't let, it, let us get it complex. The Holy Spirit, Jesus came into this world in flesh. He was crucified for me and you because He carried our sin. He resurrected in power. Seated at the right hand of majesty. But then he gave us the Holy Spirit, which is Jesus himself. So instead of pouring it on top of us, he now lives inside us. 
So this word of God that we are reading, the fullness of it is what lives inside us. No wonder when we begin to read the word of God, we begin to feed that baby to grow up. The only thing that makes our spirit, the spirit of God, the Holy Spirit inside us grow is the word of God. Because the word of God, if you take your Bible and look at it from Genesis to Revelation, the totality of it is Jesus Christ. The totality of it lives inside you. But because your flesh cannot read what is inside you, you then need to start feeding your flesh with this totality of the word that you can read to make the small spirit that is like a baby, like we said, that was born, that did not recognize itself at the general hospital, begins to grow. And the more of this word that that little baby inside you begins to eat on, the more that spirit grows and the more it continues to kill the flesh in you and begins to control you and you begin to obey it. So letting your sinful nature control your mind leads to death. And how do you let your sinful nature control you? Because if it remains like a baby and is not growing, the spirit inside you, which all of us on this line this morning that is saved and born again has, if it is not growing, it will be controlled by your sinful nature. But the more, when we say, oh, what a great man of God, what we are saying is what a man who has allowed the spirit of God inside him to grow. But it doesn't mean the great man of God does not sing. Because the great man of God, even if the spirit is growing, still have a choice to take what do I obey? Do I obey that spirit that I'm allowing to grow? Or do I obey the flesh that is contending with that spirit? But the starting point is letting the spirit control your mind. To let the spirit control your mind, you've got to feed the spirit. That is why we do what we do every morning. Feeding the spirit is what we do when we come here. Feeding the spirit is what we do. We are feeding the spirit. We are feeding the spirit. Your spirit is growing. Just the same way your mom took you out of the hospital, brought you home, and started matching food, giving you meal, making you grow. We are feeding the spirit and letting the spirit go. But letting the spirit control your mind lead to life and peace. Oh my God. There is nothing in this world for anybody that does not have the spirit of God. There is no peace. No wonder all you get out of this sinful world is the control of the devil. For the sinful nature is always hostile to God. What does that say? It's always hostile to that spirit inside you. It never did obey God's law and it will never. It never will. It never will. That's why those who are still under the control of their sinful nature can never please God. So if you do not let that spirit, you can be born again 2,000 years. If you do not let that spirit inside you grow by feeding it and you let your flesh obey or control you, you will never please God. You will always be miserable like the people of the world. But you are not controlled by your sinful nature. You are controlled by the spirit if you have the spirit of God living in you. How many, spirit have we, how many times have we heard the spirit, 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 spirit here? And I hope somebody is taking away what it means to walk in the spirit today. Because at times this thing might sound so complex. That's why I'm breaking it in, in, in piecemeal. Don't make it too complex for you. You got a spirit inside you when you come to Jesus, when you get saved. It's called the Holy Spirit. When Jesus left, he promised us that power that is residing in you. So every one of us on this call today, as far as we are saved, have got the Holy Spirit inside us. It is not poured on us, it is living inside us. He breathed into them. In the Old Testament, you only have the pleasure of it being poured on them. We have it poured on us, we have it living inside us. We have both, both measure. But now it's our responsibility to feed it. You want to walk according to the Spirit of God? You've got to feed it. You've got to be conscious about what you feed your spirit with. 
And remember that those who do not have the spirit of Christ living in them do not belong to him at all. So are you on this call this morning? I didn't say, if you are not saved, you don't have the spirit of Christ. So your, your own journey is even different because you've got a dead spirit. So the starting point this morning for me, for you, for anybody that does not know Christ, that has not surrendered itself to Christ, and what does it mean to surrender yourself to Christ? Is to confess Jesus in your heart and surrender to him as your Lord and Savior. It's not just saying any word, it's not just saying a word. Pastor Pray started this morning by talking about sound. Is giving out the right sound from your heart this morning to say, Lord Jesus, I know I am a sinner. I am sorry for my sin. Please save me. I want your Holy Spirit. That is a sound of victory. Don't be like Joshua that was not trained enough to know like the man of God that could tell the difference in the sound. Put the right sound out of your mouth this morning. And Christ lives within you. So even though your body will die because of sin, the Spirit gives you life because you have been made right with God. The Spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. Wow. You know when they went to the grave, he said, roll the stone. Lazarus, come out. It was the Spirit of God that went into Lazarus to raise Lazarus out of the dead. The same spirit that Jesus Christ said, I have the power to put my life down, I have the power to raise it up again. The women went expecting to see him at the grave, he had risen. The Bible says it is that same spirit that took Jesus Christ out of that grave. That same spirit, that same spirit, no different spirit, the same spirit that raised him out of the grave. The when they open the grave, oh, he's no more here. Oh, but we killed him. We sentenced him. We stoned him. What brought him out of this place then? Bible says it's that same spirit that raised him out of the dead. I want you to know the kind of thing you carry because at times I think Christians don't even understand what we carry. If we know what we carry, we will not open our mouth and curse our children. This child is useless. Wow. You know what you carry? And you are releasing that kind of venom on your child. I have a useless husband. Wow. You've activated your spirit, you carry the spirit of God, and you are releasing that kind of a thing on your husband. My wife is a Satan. Wow. I don't know why I'm even going down this road this morning. I think God wants to deliver somebody. Be mindful of the kind of things you carry because you carry the Spirit of God. And just as God raised Christ from the dead, He will give your mortal body by the same, by this same Spirit living within you. Therefore, dear brothers and sisters, you have no obligation to what your sinful nature urges you to do. So if you know you carry the Spirit, Paul is now saying, no, well, well, now, 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 come on. Come on, me. You, you have no obligation. For if you live by his dictates, you will die. If you live by the dictate of this sinful nature of your flesh, you will die. But if, the, if through the power of the Spirit you put to death the deeds of your sinful nature, you will live. And how do you put to death the deeds of your sinful nature? By making sure the Word rests in you, you confess it, you wash your mind, you wash everything around you. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. How do we know you are a Christian? How do you know you are spirit saved? How do we know you carry Jesus Christ in you? We see the evidence of, not just speaking in tongues, we see the evidence of the Spirit of God controlling your nature. Everything around you should reflect God. If you are the same yesterday or two days ago, if you are the same a year ago when you gave your child, when you gave your life to Christ, 
I should fear you. It's called dwarfism. If, for example, you were born, imagine the day you were born, some of us are 30 or 40, 50 years old, 60 years old on this line. If today we still look at you and you're still wrapped in swaddling clothes, pretending to be baby Jesus, won't we all drop you and run away? That is how so many of us are in the spirit. So many of us are baby Jesus. No matter what we have fed on, we have not grown up. This morning is your privilege to feed yourself. Exercise yourself in the world. Feed your spirit. You see some people, you say, oh yeah, he's been going to the gym. You just look at them, you just say, wow. Look at the muscles. So you have, you have not received a spirit that makes you fearful slaves. Instead, you received God's spirit when he adopted you as his own children. Now you can call him Abba Father. I know we've made a lot about this Abba Father. What it just says is you call him dear father, precious father, intimate father, the father that knows me. There's a difference between, like I, use, I keep using Pastor Priest as an example. Pastor Priest, son just rolling into the room this morning and say, Mommy, come. Mommy, I want to eat. There is a difference than me coming there and say, Mommy, she will look at me. I'm not your mother. What's your program? Book her off. There is a relationship level that you have with God that makes you open your mouth before him and intimate connection. For his spirit joins with our spirit to affirm that we are God's children. Can you see why every morning when we begin to pray, I start with that verse. Holy Spirit, join with my spirit. Holy Spirit, join with my spirit. I'm sure we should tell any unbeliever this, he looks at you like you're mad. What do you mean? Spirit joins with your spirit. Because without the spirit of God, linking up with the spirit inside you, there is no way you can have an understanding of this word. There is no way you can be affirmed as a child of God. There's something, there's a conviction inside you, no matter what the word tells you, that tells you you are a child of God. And since we are his children, we are his heads. Oh my God, I inherit everything is God. What does it mean to inherit his, everything is God? Open the will. Pastor Praise gave us an assignment to go and study what the salvation involved. In fact, when you understand what is inside your will, you will stick with this God forever, no matter what anybody says. In fact, together with Christ, we are heirs of God's glory. Wow. But if we are to share in his glory, we must also share in his suffering. Tomorrow, we will be looking at what does it mean to share in his suffering. I didn't want to teach that with this. I don't think it's appropriate. Paul just goes off on one about learning to enjoy the suffering, you know. But if we are to share in his glory, we must also share in his suffering. I want us to just underline that and wait with that for tomorrow. Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you for the opportunity to see this world as it is. We thank you because, oh Lord, your spirit inside us is rejoicing. I can feel some people this morning just happy that they are born again. Happy to know, Lord, that they've got a spirit that is being fed. I can feel your people. I can feel the presence of the Holy Spirit this morning speaking to me that there is a sister, there is a brother here rejoicing. That I know no matter my circumstance this morning, I have the Holy Spirit living inside of me. And the Holy Spirit living, living inside of me is able to dominate anything the world throws at me. So, Lord, we thank you. Even this morning, we'll pray for Sister Lizard and um, my other sister, um, who is your sister Francesca that, that, that read. Let's just unmute and pray for them in one minute. Let's just leave them before God. That Father, the Holy Spirit will fulfill that which he has said concerning them. That even for everyone that was part of this reading, Lord, that tomorrow morning when we'll come, oh Lord, they will be filled with your 24 hour turnaround miracle. That everything we desire, Lord, even as we read that word, will come true for them. Lord, we thank you. Jesus, we worship you. Lord, we bless your name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. To you alone be glory. None of us, all of you. We will serve you forever. I don't care what the world says. It is you I will stick with. Thank you, Jehovah. In Jesus' mighty name. And I yield my mic. Thank you very much, sir.
and the Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for filling his son in the name of Jesus. With that which has left in Jesus' name, thank you for replenishing him and refreshing him as well in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You know, as you were sharing um, this summary, um, and you, you mentioned a few things about growth, growth. And I believe what the Holy Spirit wants us to do is to embrace, embrace our identity in Him. Because we cannot grow if we have not been able to embrace our new identity. When we look at, when we continue to look at the scripture and, um, um, you know, the, the wrestle between the flesh and the spirit. But I mentioned yesterday that we are meant to leave spirit, soul and body, not body, soul and spirit. So yes, we embrace our physical. Most of us, you know, some of us don't want to talk about our ages because we don't want to grow old. You know, I'm young, I'm 16, I'm 17, but you are in the body, say 55, uh, heading to somewhere. Hallelujah. Um, but in the spirit, we also need to embrace our identity in Christ. And my prayer is that we would embrace it, that I am a new creation. I'm a new creation. And the spirit is no longer I that lives, but Christ that lives in me. And when we embrace our, our spiritual identity, that we have now been born in the spirit, we would allow ourselves to be led by the spirit. And when we allow ourselves to be led by the spirit, the word of God, we would not struggle with the word because walking in the spirit is walking in obedience with the word. So I want us to pray that the Holy Spirit will help us to, to help us to embrace our identity in the spirit. Because when I live in the reality of who I am in the spirit, I would want to grow. I would want to grow just like you'll be concerned if something is not functioning properly with your physical body and we feel discomfort or we feel pain or we have children and you say, ah, oh, that child is not speaking. That child is not responding the way they should. That child is not eating well. Or that child is not focused. You know, we are concerned about the physical aspects. When we are really, really in touch with our spirit, we will identify, ah, why am I always walking in fear? Why am I always dropping? coming up why do things destabilize me so easily why do things irritate me so easily but we will not stop there but we will now ask ourselves what do I need to do to stabilize myself what do I need to do to strengthen my faith what do I need to do to maintain the peace of God that he has given to me what do I need to do to maintain my healing, what do I need to do? But it really starts from us embracing our identity, our new identity, our new identity. Holy Spirit, I ask that you open the eyes of our understanding. Every one of us here, anyone that is giving their life to Christ now from this day forward, Anyone that is making a new commitment to their walk with you. Anyone, oh God, that has been saved and we have, you know, to say 10 years, 20 years, 30 years. But Lord, when you look at us, it's like, I don't even know where we are. But you know, you know the reality of where we are. But not just where we are, but you know where we should be. If we are totally submitted to you. We are not struggling with your word. I pray that you help us to embrace this new life. And Pastor Chris said somebody is celebrating. I pray that all of us will be celebrating who we really are in you. Who you want us to be in you. In you. In you. 
really not concerned about me being in the world because in the world there's trouble, there's tribulation, there's suffering. But my being in you would help me to even face those tribulations with strength and power. So I'm more concerned about my being in you, my work in you, my identity in you. Help me to embrace it. Help me to understand the reality of it of who I am in you, of who we are in you. Let that be your prayer this morning, tonight. Whatever you are, as long as you can hear what I'm saying, let this be the cry of your heart. Lord, show me who I am in you. And maybe where I am and where I need to be so that I would do the need for you. Through my yielding to the Holy Ghost, do the need for you. Because it saddens the heart of a parent when they know that their children should be at a certain place in life and they're underachieving. There's no parent except that parent doesn't really care about that child. But a parent who loves a child would never overlook child that is only achieving you want to do or push them or remind them or motivate them or help them and that's what God is doing in our daily fellowship that's what he's doing he's pulling us up he's motivating us he's reminding us and I'm concerned about your growth you are a giant You are made in my image and in my likeness. I want you to walk in your new identity. That identity that would have to make you. That identity that when the enemy sees you, all he needs to do is just flee in seven different directions. Because you know who you are. Because you know who you are. That's what he wants. When Satan comes to you all with his suggestions or in whatever way you're able to say, not this house. Get the behind me. You have no place here. Sickness, you have no place here. Trouble, you have no place here. That's where God wants us to be. That's where he wants us to be. So Father, we embrace our identity in you. We embrace the truth that you keep revealing to us daily. We embrace it. We embrace it. We embrace it. I pray that you are in agreement with me as you hear in my voices. Wherever you are, as long as, long as you can hear me, I pray that you are in agreement with me. I pray. Because that's the heart of the Father. Hallelujah. He doesn't want, he doesn't take pleasure in our struggle. When I'm in our struggles, he doesn't take pleasure, you know, saying, God, I can't do it. He doesn't take pleasure in that. No. That's why he said to me, don't come to me with impossibilities. He doesn't take pleasure in that. He takes pleasure in us working in his realm. When he said, let us make man in our image and in our likeness. Oh my God, it pleased his heart for him to say that about us what God takes pleasure in when he sees us thrive in his identity in us oh my God and brethren this is not for us to feel good now when we finish praying we'll go back to a place where God doesn't exist should be our abiding place. Working in his image and in his likeness. The image of Christ. Ah, Nandos Kalabaya. In the image of Christ.
me in Christ Jesus. Make that declaration, I'm in Christ Jesus. I'm in Christ Jesus. Remind yourself this morning, evening time, wherever you are, maybe you can type it on the chat. I am in Christ Jesus. 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 Releasing that sound. I am in Christ Jesus. I am in Christ Jesus. Yes, I am in Christ Jesus. I am in Christ Jesus. I am in Christ Jesus. I am. I am. I am in Christ Jesus. 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 I am made in the image and in the likeness of God. I am in Christ Jesus. My identity is in Christ Jesus. I embrace the new life in Christ Jesus. Yes, I am in Christ Jesus. 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 Oh yes, I am in Christ Jesus. It cancels condemnation. I am in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh my God, it cancels the claim of the other. I am in Christ Jesus. 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 If I walk in the Spirit, I am in Christ Jesus. If I walk in obedience, I am in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. If I take pleasure in the new life, in the new life, I am in Christ Jesus. I take pleasure in the Word of God. I am in Christ Jesus. I am in Christ Jesus. I have His mind. I have the mind of the Spirit. I am in Christ Jesus. I am in Christ Jesus. I am in Christ Jesus. I am walking in my identity. I am in Christ Jesus. 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 I am
Lord, we thank you for what we have received this morning, our evening time, in the name of Jesus. And we remain in our new identity in Christ Jesus, where we continue to walk in this. 